choice. Let's start from the House of Parliament. Clearly, 49.5% of eligible voters across the country say they will not vote to retain their members of parliament in the 2020 elections. That's according to a joint research by the University of Ghana's Political Science Department and the Conrad Adeno Foundation. Kwasi Afreniyama has more in the following report. The research, which was conducted from March to part of June 2019, saw the research team interviewing 100 respondents from each of the 275 constituencies. Now, to break it down further, they did this on an electoral area basis with latest data from the Electoral Commission. They had 20 respondents in five electoral areas per constituency, and they focused mainly on the role of MPs in their constituencies. Although the primary duty of MPs is to make laws, lead researcher Dr. Isaac Ousumensa revealed that most constituents are more interested in seeing their MPs undertake developmental projects. We are told that MP is supposed to be an advocate for development. Nationally, 50.8, more than half of Ghanaians are telling us that MP, your role is to what? Develop. You are advocate of development. That is the role of member of parliament. Last week, there was a program organized by the Carlos Bishop when the first deputy speaker was telling us his experience of going to his constituents, whereby he met the people and discussed issues about parliament with them. They were not interested. They were interested in the school classroom when you are building it. One of the major concerns raised by constituents was that many MPs don't visit their constituencies. I'm told that you need a lot of money to be able to visit their constituencies. But the truth is, whether you like it or not, members of parliament we expect to in the constituency. Now, we have information in some electoral areas and some constituencies that since some members of parliament were voted for, they have not done what we call 10 to tour. Going back to say thank you people for voting for me to serve you, some members of parliament are yet to do that. A member of the research team, Ketri from Pont, said 49.5% of constituents across the country said they won't vote for their incumbent MPs in 2020. According to Ketri from Pont, experienced lawmakers enjoy more support from constituents than first time MPs in the legislature. It is the Mugabe that people will think people say they should go, they should go, they should go. But also, 30 or so Mugabe's, those who have spent four years or more, one ten of them, the people support them and they should go again. On the other hand, of the 121st MM, about 80, they have people say they should go again. Some members of parliament who were present during the presentation indicated that the research is a great source of feedback for them. Take for instance, that assuming my constituency that they've not been seeing me, if you want to win again, what will you do? I will start going there. At least it tells you what your people think, whether uh, they are justified to think the way they think, uh, whether uh, they appreciate your work or not, uh, whether you have a difficulty that they don't know, whatever it is. According to the findings, Education Minister Dr. Matthew Pukuprempe is the best performing minister in President Ekufuado's administration. Without a doubt, 18 months is a long time in politics and a lot could happen within that period. And certainly, no certain member of parliament would want to dismiss the outcome of this research done by a team that accurately predicted the outcome of the 2016 general election. For TV3 News, my name is Kwachi Afreniyama. All right, so let's uh, go to Skype now and deal, we want to delve a bit um, deeper into this discussion and pick the thoughts of um, Dr. Rashid Draman. He's the Executive Director of the Africa Center for Parliamentary Affairs. Um, good afternoon, sir, if you can hear me, and thank you for your time. Good afternoon. Well, to start with, uh, the research shows that minority MPs are performing a lot better, or at least slightly better than those in a majority. What in your opinion, could be accounting for this? Well, I think uh, generally what we see across uh, many parliaments around the world is that uh, usually opposition MPs who are in line to wrestle power from the majority group uh, are most of the time active um, when compared to uh, 
the members of parliament from ruling parties. So I believe this might be what what uh, what what has accounted for this. Sometimes complacency sets in uh, in, in in the case of um, MPs who are uh, from the ruling party, particularly in the in the case of this our parliament where. Uh, the results of the 2016 elections um, gave the MPP uh, a very huge margin in terms of uh, the difference between the NDC and the MPP. So I think this might be what, what has accounted for this. And uh, looking at the sample size that was worked with, that's uh, some 27,000, over 27,000, and the percentage of persons that uh, we are told would not vote for their MPs, what is the correlation we can draw, the numbers and then the percentage? Do you think that um, it really would have any influence at all? Well, I think uh, even if we leave the numbers aside, let's look at history. I mean, this is this, uh, what, what we are hearing from this research, I think is confirmed by history um, in Ghana. It's also confirmed by what we know happens around the continent. In our country, over the years, I think averagely the, the attrition rate is, is around 50%. Of course, I mean, now we have a disaggregated kind of data which shows, uh, I think, is skewed more towards first-time MPs and so on. But I think averagely, we normally see around 50%. In some countries, it's higher. I mean, in Sierra Leone, the last elections, 80% did not come back. There was a time in Senegal, 95% did not come back. So I think what we are seeing in terms of the data um, is consistent with history, is consistent with, uh, with reality, both in our country and in, uh, in so, other so countries what around So what you're country. saying is there is the possibility that this could translate to reality come 2020, where majority of the uh, MPs on the, uh, the government side are likely to lose their seats. Well, I mean, I think uh, that is that is uh, that that is a fact. I mean, not only the government side. I think uh, the opposition, the opposition itself, should not be <laughs> should not be smiling about this. I think uh, this is perception, but sometimes uh, it translates very much into reality. And then there could be some some uh, some some um, maybe, if you like. Uh, uh, um, uh, outliers, I mean, some surprises. And uh, before we let you go, there has also been the concern of um, the time that this research has been conducted and when the reality sets in in 2020 and that the electorate themselves, one, are not properly educated on what the role of an MP is. And then also it's really quite what, what 18 months to go there is a possibility when they start getting the T-shirts and the five Ghana CDs and, and the, the bags of rice, their minds could turn. Based on the research that you mentioned, does that play a role at all in the final decision? Well, I mean, that, that's going to play a role. I mean, uh, earlier when I was talking to another group and I was saying that, look, the reason why we see all these uh, kind of data that we are seeing about our um, MPs and our parliament is because of the structure of our economy. Until until the the structure of our economy changes, until people are able to meet their bread and butter issues, we are going to continue to see these kinds of uh, these kinds of things. Uh, look, IPU, the Interparliamentary Union, did a study around the world. I mean, a few years ago, and they found that look, 53 percent of citizens around the world think that the role of a member of parliament should be the role that he or she plays in the constituency. I mean, and that is, uh, you know, mainly skewed, particularly in African countries. If you go to the UK, in Canada, other places, citizens are not going to ask M an MP to build a hospital or to build a road. They know that's not his role. I mean, and then also have structures that are responsible for that, and they have a very good understanding. And then they don't follow an MP and say, give me money for school fees and so on. So until the structure of our economy changes, until mm -hmm. our station in the process of development shifts from where we are right now, I think uh, we are going to be, I mean, have to be living with this for some time to come. We are grateful for your time as always, uh, Dr. Rashid Draman. Mm -hmm. uh, he is the uh, director of the Africa Center for Parliamentary Affairs, mm -hmm. uh, helping us try
try and put this into perspective. But let's come back mm -hmm. to the, the, the studio and speak um, with uh, Dr. Isaac Owusu Mensah. He's a political science, um, political scientist, I should say, and then also um, was part of the team that undertook this research. Good afternoon, sir. Thank you for your yeah, time. No yes, good to have you with us to um, you know delve deeper into this. First of all, members of parliament have already you know, downplayed this report and are saying that oh, you, even the sample size you used, you probably just spoke to very few people who would give you something more concrete. So this is nothing to write home about. What is your reaction to that? Thank you very much. I think as a researcher, when research is conducted, you expect this type of responses. But I would say that any member of parliament that will downplay this research is doing uh, his digging his own grief, let me use the word this way. Because if you have not been to a community and we've told you that your community people are looking for you, then you have to go there. Mm -hmm. Let me just give an example. In 2016, I'm sure you recollect that we also did a, 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 a study that MPP was going to beat NDC. And our difference was, our percentage was 9.20. The final result was 9.219. Mm. So, it was so, so at least your sample size and your final outcome is almost equal to the um, final the, election the, results. And let me also tell for the p p consumption of the public and of course the members of parliament as well. These are quantitative figures that we have given out. Okay. We also have qualitative data from every constituency. We have a dossier as big as that for every constituency. Really? What they like about the MP, what they don't like about the MP, what the MP has done, who is the contender in that constituency in his, from his party, who is the contender from the, uh, the opposition party, and we have all that detail. So this is just the quantitative information that we have. Mm. If you want more information about detail about your constituency, we can give up. But if we don't play it, we don't have any problem. The university's objective is to produce knowledge. Okay. It's for industry to either use it or throw it away. That's actually my next question. What was the rationale behind this research? What were you seeking to achieve? But one of the main objectives we were seeking to achieve is to avoid the high attrition rate in our Parliament. Well, I'm happy uh, the Dramani to talked about. It's not good for the country. Mm. If you want to build democracy, you must have institutions. If you go to some countries like Egypt, we have MP that has been there for 30 years. Some countries 29 years, some countries uh, uh, 25 years. In Ghana, we cannot boast of that. We, so we do have a few, don't we? At least no, we have the, well, one the, person, the ones we've tagged the One person since 1992. Only two people since 1996. And it's not good for us as a country. Yeah, but Doc, you can also then uh, draw in this same conversation that these people, the fact that they've stayed longer in, uh, in Parliament, doesn't mean that they are doing what is expected of them. It, it, is that not part of the conversation? No, it's that part of the conversation. But the point of emphasis is that we don't want a situation whereby we have 50% attrition rate. Right. So we want the MPs to look back. This is a midterm. Look back. What am I doing right? What am I not doing well? What can I do to improve my lot? Mm -hmm. So that if we can do all this, at the end of the day, we are able to reduce the number of people who lose their seats. Mm -hmm. But last election, if you remember, some people were shocked at the primaries. And some people are shocked at the elections. We want to avoid all these things. Okay. That is why we did the research. There is also the concern about um, was the issue where the, 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 the electorate or the voters have no knowledge what the role of the MP is. Constitutionally, we know that members of parliament are supposed to be what, lawmakers. In fact, in the, in the local language, they call them mrashebeja, so they are supposed to you know, make laws. How does the, the, the duty or the responsibility of an MP translate into the expectation that the citizens or the voters have of them? Thank you very much. MP has three major roles. One is the one that is done in Parliament, whereby he's speaking on the floor of the House, committee level and all that. That is one. The next one is representation. MP going to TV station, radio station, going to ECOWAS parliament, AU parliament, Commonwealth parliamentary union, all that is also one. The next one is MPs work at the constituency. Why are you talking about the fact that MPs role is to make laws? These are British, these are British parliamentary democratic theories. Right. In Ghana, it doesn't happen that way. In Ghana, that's, we also tested that, and 50% told us that for MPs, major role is to advocate for development, 50%. And 88% also inform us that the MPs made promises during the campaign. Promises about what? No mm -hmm. promise about, I'll give you a husband or wife. Promise about the fact that we will build your roads. Promise about the schools. fact that we will build schools, we will build hospitals, we will, we will give employment. So if you've been voted for on, on that basis, then you should be held accountable on that basis. But are we failing, or are we not failing as a country to educate the people? Did your research also seek to educate people on 
what the role of the MP should be, and that they should start holding them accountable on those bases, like the three key things you talked about. No, as a matter of fact, when somebody needs a school fees to go to school, and you go and explain to him, and my role as a member of parliament is to make law in parliament, next time they will not vote for you. Unfortunately, it's but the structure of our economy. The yeah. economy is not doing well as a, uh, as a country over the years. Mm -hmm. So if the structure of the economy depends that everybody should make a contribution, let me be very emphatic with you. They expect every stakeholder in the constituents to make a contribution. DCE, member of parliament, chief, even if you're an educated person from a village, they expect you to make a contribution to that. So every big person in the community has a contribution to make. So if we voted for you, as a member of parliament, and you want to come and tell us the stories or theories that, or the, according to parliamentary democracy, I'm supposed to make laws, I'm supposed to check the ex executive pest and all this. And these are theories. We are okay. not interested in that as a country. We okay. haven't reached there yet. The, the Speaker of Parliament has actually spoken about this, also asking a very similar question, like whether or not you have sought to increase the education. I know the NCC is supposed to be doing that as well. The information we've gathered is that um, members of parliament are currently debating your research. And so we'll go briefly to the House of Parliament and pick the feed. Then, based on some of the things they'll say, we'll come and conclude the interview. Regional Minister, Deputy, and all the MMDCs um, also thought that most of the students go to write the morning section, and in the afternoon, how to survive becomes a problem. So government has actually decided that those in that enclave should be given one hot meal after the first paper, so at least they don't go home, they stay over to write. And I think this is a very laudable uh, uh, program, which we must all I think. I think uh, we just missed that by a whisker, because the, that debate actually just finished, or that discussion on the floor of parliament just finished. So then they're talking about the BEC and issues around, uh, surrounding it. We would also be delving into that while the bulletin goes on, but let's come in studio and conclude, um, or you know, finalize this conversation. So of the constituencies you visited, which ones stood out for you and what were the major things that jumped out at you uh, out of the research? First, one of the things that surprised me most is that Ghanaians, what they expect of the MP first is to visit them. Okay. And visitation took a lot of this. And if we look at which MPs are visiting, which, are, which regions are not visiting, and I was surprised to see that Greater Accra MPs are those that are not visiting their constituents so much. Really? And yes, that was one of the shocking things. That and, MPs in Greater Accra are those who are not visiting their constituents as compared to all the other regions in Ghana. One of, one of the surprises. Second surprise is we found out about explanation of government policies. Mm. You notice that the NDC MPs are explaining government policies much more than the MPP MPs. Right. Yes. And then maybe just for a teaser, we have more details we want to come. We also talk about the best performing MPs. Okay. We have Asutisi South, Efutu, Abitifi, Atrima East, Elembele, North Tong, Adakulo, Akim, Achimo, uh, Suedro, North Dai, and the Ketu South. These are the best performing, the best performing, performing MPs according to their constituents, how they rank, rank them. Okay. Uh, TV3 certainly will be getting that dossier and I will pick out some of the, uh, the notable uh, components of it and then we'll make it available on our website and then also we'll be discussing it further in our subsequent bulletins. But thank you very much. Uh, Dr. Isaac Ousu is a political science, political scientist and then also uh, part of that research that rated and ranked MPs according to performance based on what their constituents are saying.